other major story we're following this morning is the inflation rate, reaching a 40-year high. Here's NBC News Chief White House Correspondent Kristen Welker with the details. America's unrelenting inflation crisis keeps getting worse, with news that it's accelerated to 8.5 percent, a 41-year high. Prices surging across the board. Gas prices up 48 percent over last year. Food prices jumping nearly 9 percent, including meat, poultry, fish, and eggs spiking nearly 14 percent. Housing costs surging, too, with rents up 5 percent. In Pennsylvania, school bus driver Renee Schultz says soaring grocery bills have left her struggling to feed her family. Now she's turning to a food pantry. It's made it difficult. You know, have sometimes you have to pay, make a choice on, you know, what bill's going to not get paid so that you can make sure that you got food on the table. And in California, plumber Louis Ray says the cost of parts have surged 40 to 60 percent. What's the toughest part? about this moment and the increased prices? The toughest part is just not knowing what the future holds, actually. I'm not just a business owner, I'm a human being. I have a household, I have a car note. And a new government forecast predicts gas prices this summer will be the highest since 2014. In Iowa, President Biden saying he's boosting the sale and production of ethanol blended gasoline as a way to alleviate pain at the pump and again blaming Vladimir Putin's Ukraine invasion. I'm doing everything within my power by executive orders to bring down the price and address the Putin price hike. But in reality, inflation has been soaring above 5% for nearly a year. And our latest NBC News poll shows just 6% of Americans blame rising prices on the Russian invasion of Ukraine. 38% blame President Biden and his policies. The president facing criticism from Republicans and a key Democrat, Senator Joe Manchin, writing the Federal Reserve and the administration failed to act fast enough, calling the response, quote, half measures. All right. Thank you so much to NBC's uh, Kristen uh, Welker with that report. Let's bring in right now. Uh, former Treasury official and morning show economic analyst Steve Ratner. Steve, I just I, I just a little surprised uh, that uh, Joe Manchin is is blaming uh, Joe Biden uh, for for inflation. Obviously, if they pass these six trillion dollar BBB bills, obviously uh, there would be a lot more uh, to blame there. But I mean, I, I'm just curious, how do you break it down? We have obviously, as you've said, we've had two trillion dollars sitting on the sidelines waiting to be spent. Uh, people are rushing back into the economy. We always knew it was going to be hot. Uh, the economy was going to be hot. Uh, is it the Biden administration's fault? Is it the Fed's fault? Uh, was it politically feasible for the Fed to take dramatic uh, measures two, three months ago? I, th I think it's a combination of issues, Joe, obviously. I think you certainly have to put the Fed near the top of the list for uh, putting several, I think six trillion dollars literally into the economy in the form of low interest rates and buying uh, bonds and things like that. You do have to fault a bit the Biden administration in the size of the rescue packages that they try to get passed, uh, put aside the ones that, that got passed. There's something over two trillion dollars in consumer bank accounts that they haven't been able to spend uh, due to the pandemic that is now coming out and that's a lot of what's driving this. And obviously there's bad luck. Uh, the Ukraine certainly plays a role in all this. So there's a number of, of places put to play. But what Manchin is trying to do is basically preempt another big rescue package and make clear that he thinks the next rescue package needs to have a big component of deficit reduction in it. And uh, I would agree with that. It's time to start dealing with the deficit as part of trying to bring down the pressure of, on inflation. Well, you also agreed with Manchin uh, that uh, we couldn't ha pass a $6 trillion BBB bills. Even $3 trillion would, again, add too much heat to the economy. And now we can, uh, consumers can be grateful that Manchin did stop that. I'm just, I just would like to know what president you've ever met that would have been able to stop inflation from going up uh, as we exited covid and as a Russian war, uh, as Russia began a war that caused gas prices to spike. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not uh, part of the administration's fault for taking their eye off of the ball a little bit on what they were asking for, but they never got what they were asking for. So it's sort of hard to blame BBB, their requests, uh, inflation on their requests for BBB, because they never got any of that. Well, that's why I said that I think the principal responsibility lies with the Fed. 
But the administration did get the first piece of BBB. They got the $1.9 billion American Rescue Plan, which sent out a whole bunch of stimulus checks at a time when we even back then knew that pretty much the last thing the economy needed was more, were more stimulus checks. So I do think there is some responsibility on the part of the Biden administration. But as I said, the war in Ukraine was definitely an unanticipated consequence. It would have been better if we hadn't already started some inflation going. But, uh, but yes, definitely Ukraine was, uh, is a principal culprit, as you see in some of the numbers I can show you. All right, Steve, let's look at the first chart. Soaring prices outpace wages right now. What are you looking at? Yeah, so Kristen Welker gave you the headline numbers. Let me try to fill in a, piece, a few pieces around it. So one of the more interesting parts of this and more disturbing parts of this is you had the 8.5% inflation that she mentioned. But what she, uh, it wasn't part of her piece, is the fact that wages, while they've gone up faster, have not kept up. And that's the turquoise line. And if you look at that turquoise line, going all the way back to 1997, and, and you could go back further, the data isn't quite as good. The turquoise line, which is wages, has generally stayed above the black line, which is inflation, obviously meaning that consumers are getting an increase in their spending power. But what's happened here is that even though wages are now going up at about 6%, which is the highest they've gone up in decades, the 8.5% obviously is more than that. And so you have consumers losing ground uh, in their purchasing power, and that's a big piece of what you see going on out there. And then the second one is fascinating because it shows your next chart how broad this is. There's so much focus on gas, but there's groceries, there's rent, obviously, there's appliances. This is such a deep and wide inflation spike. Exactly, Willie. There's two pieces to this. There is the big gasoline piece, and gasoline alone was 50% of the increase last month in inflation. Right. Gasoline is now $4.20 across the country. It was $2.60 a year ago. But as you said, that's only part of the picture. What I put here are a few uh, almost random products that people buy all the time. If you're buying furniture, you're paying 16% more. And by the way, if you look at the bottom, you might almost barely see tiny little turquoise bars. That's what the inflation was in these categories before all this happened. So 16% versus zero for inflation, 13% versus zero for chicken, 12% versus minus one for major appliances. And Mike Barnacle, your peanut butter is going to cost you 9% more relative to minus I one. I have noticed that, actually. <laughs> yeah. Minus one. <laughs> minus one in the past. So it is very broad, broad based. Air, uh, air, air fares are up 24% over a year ago. And there's more to come because wheat and chicken and things, uh, wheat is up 39%, corn is up 19%. There's more still coming through the system. You, you know, the, the interesting thing about the groceries is not only visibly, actually, the prices are much higher now than they were a year ago, but the scarcity of some items, the pipeline providing. Well, the goods, it's, yeah. you know, it's very hard to get stuff. Uh, that the, supp the famous supply chain problems, which partly are true supply chain partners and par partly are just excess demand have created uh, shortages, you have a lot of stuff. But let's turn to uh, consumers because this has both implications for obviously individual Americans as well as political implications. So on the left you can see that consumers expect inflation to be 6.6% over the coming 12 months. And if you ask them 14 months ago, what did they think? They thought 3%. So cons this has all been absorbed by consumers, and they have become very, very pessimistic about that. And you can see that more clearly uh, on the chart on the right, which is consumer sentiment, which has hit, the, which has hit a, a, a modern low, uh, 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 as you can see on that chart on the right. 81% of Americans think the economy is going to be in a recession this year. Hmm. So, John, there's no way for the Biden administration to sugarcoat this. Everyone is feeling this, whether they're at the gas station or the grocery store, wherever it is. They're trying this line, the Putin price hike. I'm not sure anybody's going to buy that. How do they handle this? Yeah, I mean, that's the line we've heard from the president and Democrats recently. We'll see. Uh, you know, sort of polling suggests that Americans do are, are willing to pay a little bit more at the gas pump right now to help the Ukrainians in their war effort. But if this goes on for months and months and months, that could change. And certainly inflation could be a def defining issue for the midterms this year. But the, the White House is, is nervous about this. Everything costs more right now. And, and the supply chain issues are only going to grow. The COVID outbreak in China right now is having a real impact. There could be issues potentially at the Mexican border with more and more migrants uh, coming across there as well. We heard from him yesterday with the ethanol fuel announcement, which might make a little bit of a difference. He's going to North Carolina tomorrow to talk about supply chains. But Steve, what more can they do? And, and, and how much of this is going to be about interest rates? 
There's not much more they can do. They're trying, and a lot of this is political. You know, they're releasing oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve may have a modest impact on it. But it's it's good you mentioned interest rates because what this, these inflation numbers mean is that interest rates are going to go up faster and sooner than people would have guessed even a few weeks ago. Mortgage rates, which are very sensitive, you see, are now up in the high four mm. percent, close to five percent for thirty-year mortgages in just an incredibly short period of time. And it's clear now that the Fed is going to probably have to raise rates, not a quarter of a point at its coming meetings, but maybe a half a point, which is something it only does in extreme circumstances. And so, yeah, consumers are going to also feel the bite of higher rates. Of course, savers will get the benefit of higher rates, but people who are borrowing money are going to feel that uh, in interest rates as well. Mm. We're just past the top of the hour, 7.02 on the East Coast. We've got Steve Ratner talking about the story that's at the top of uh, the Wall Street Journal today, inflation spiking. The spike continues. We're also going to be talking about Vladimir Putin saying peace is not at hand anytime soon. And he's expanding uh, his... his uh, or, or he's actually he's actually uh, retracting what his goals are to the Donbass. Uh, uh, but Steve Ratner, before we let you go and before we get to the top stories, I've got to ask you. We're talking about um, the, the, the just this massive, massive uh, shortage uh, shortages in certain areas because there's such a demand. Again, it's this pent up demand you've been talking about. I talked to Andrew Ross Sorkin a couple of days ago. We've seen it over the past several weeks. Other people in airports have seen it over the past couple of weeks. I mean, airports insane. I've never seen it like this before. JetBlue uh, just that they can't handle the rush. Other airports can't handle the rush. Uh, and again, you have in the middle of the week in clear weather, uh, one plane after another being canceled uh, just because of overwhelming demand and a lot of pilots and flight attendants not showing up. Yeah, that is another piece of the puzzle, Joe, which is the fact that people, what's the so-called great resignation of a lot of people leaving their jobs. We have 11 million unfilled jobs in this country and only five or six million people actually looking for jobs. So even if everybody who's looking for a job took a job, we'd still have five million plus or minus unfilled jobs. And that is a function of all this demand, all this money in the system, companies trying to hire, as well as we've talked about, people not going back to work, either because they're getting close to retirement or they still have childcare or health concerns or whatever. So yeah, so the airplane thing is a good example of what's happening, which is huge demand. Airfares up 24% at the moment from a year ago. And the airlines not being able to provide the supply because they can't necessarily get the pilots and flight attendants and ground crew and all the people they need to make those planes fly. All right, Steve Ratner, thank you very, very much. Uh hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.